Well, Sue, I'm so glad that I get a chance to talk to you about this kind of subject. It's on manipulation, but it's not from the child. It's based on me as a parent. So why don't you just share with us some of your experiences and what brought you to write about this? Well, most of the book I wrote with tears running down my face. Aww. And in this chapter, I was so overcome with my own areas of sin mm -hmm. towards my children um, that we had actually, we were on spring break and all of our children were with us and I wrote a repentance letter to my children. Now, and your I, children are older, so they're we need to, yes. They're older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I asked them to forgive me for this area of manipulation and control. And it's one of the things that Christian parents in particular struggle with. Okay. And so when your children are younger, right. you're teaching them how to obey. Mm -hmm. And you want them to obey right away. Mm -hmm. and, and you reach a certain point where you almost feel like you're a good parent because they're obeying. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens when your children turn 18 and they have choices? That's right, they do. And they may have a different conviction in their heart than you do for them. Mm -hmm. And God himself has given them the ability to choice, mm -hmm. choose. What I've seen for Christian parents is often we cross over and try to control our children at that point. Well, how do we, how do, we do that? <laughs> <laughs> I think the intent of our heart is to help. Okay. Now, I really saw this when my daughter turned 18. And uh, we were within a church where we taught guard your heart. Mm -hmm. And as a parents, we had a conviction that, that our children not date until they were of a marriageable age. Mm -hmm. And so that is what we taught. My daughter wanted to date. Mm -hmm. And so because we were so strong in our beliefs, right. then she felt like she had to lie about it. And that is one of the things that will happen with our children if we become so overpowering when they're adults, mm -hmm. is they'll feel like they can't be honest with us mm -hmm. or they can't tell us the truth. And sometimes it's the actual conviction of their heart. And so for parents, we need to be able to move into a role of influencing our children Mm -hmm. rather than controlling their decisions. Wow, that is a mouthful that you just said. Influencing versus controlling. Well, what about when they make a poor choice or they're going in a direction that you're feeling it's not in their best interests? Well, scripturally, I was really impacted when I was thinking about this issue by going to Cain and Abel. Okay. And mm -hmm. so God himself put his children in a perfect garden. Yes. yes. And he was a perfect father, and yet they still chose to obey. And God warned Cain. Mm -hmm. Cain, there's sin crouching at your, the door. Okay. But God did not control him. Right. In fact, the first murder happened. Yes, that's and true. I realized that God's gift of free choice mm -hmm. is so important that God himself will not steal back that free choice. Hmm. And it spoke to my heart that God is big enough. Hmm. And there are times our children will make poor choices. Mm -hmm. They will sin. They will get in really difficult situations. Mm -hmm. But they have an opportunity to encounter a living God, a redeemer. Mm -hmm. And God is big enough. And so what happens is our new role as parents is as our children get older, we become an intercessor for them. Mm. And we entrust them to the living, loving arms of God because God can handle it. Well, so, so far we're to be an intercessor and an influencer. So what would you share? Because I can really identify, I confess that I probably step over my bounds and I, I just think I, I want the best for them. So if I do see them going in a direction, I, so I really identify with what you're sharing. So what would be some tips for me as a parent to watch and guard, 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 because I really want my home to be a home of peace. 
and I want my children to feel that they can come anytime and re regardless of what happens. And that they can be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's true. Well, mm -hmm. my process with my daughter was one of repentance. Mm -hmm. As God began to show me then in, in the journal, I even began to read her different things and, and saying I'm sorry. And you know what happened? Mm -hmm. She's now 24. She is the most honest person mm -hmm. and she feels like she can tell me things oh, and she great. can be honest with me. But I had to change. Mm -hmm. I was the one that needed to change. I was the one that had sinned against her. And some of our rules were so rigid that they drove our child to rebellion. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that's something that Christian parents, as their children get older, that we can become legalistic. And we need to know that Jesus was never legalistic. Absolutely. He yeah. came and he was a life giver. So mm -hmm. I think that the, the it's being connected to the life giver. Amen. It's being mm -hmm. connected to him and by the spirit for each individual situation, determining what to do with that particular mm -hmm. child. And that's really true. When you have multiple children, yes. each one is different. Yes. And so you have to deal with it with a lot of prayer and just to tr trust that God is big enough. Well, you know, you can come and you can get Sue's book, Nine Traits of a Life-Giving Mom. Um, go to ctvn.org and you will um, get more tips on how to be a, a life-giving mom. Thank you so much for coming and just sharing your heart and just to give us encouragement as Christian parents raising Christian children. Well, they're adults, really you know, raising Christian adult children yeah. in and Adventist And launching them. And oh, launching them into their future and into their destiny. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.